O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Once again, thank you for joining me for this special podcast. These are very curious and difficult days, and it's hard to just do things as we normally would, but we're still hunkering down, as our governor has asked us to do, to get in front of the COVID-19 pandemic that continues to haunt us all. Let's remember to continue to pray for those on the front line who work in healthcare those who provide food and essential services for law enforcement officers and and many others who are putting their lives on the line every day. And we have some of those people in our congregation, so this hits very close to home. But today is a special day on the calendar, which we call Mother's Day. So we're going to take a break from our study of the book of Ephesians to celebrate by asking the question, how should we honor our mothers. But first, we probably ought to ask the question, why should we honor our mothers? For most of you, this question needs no answer. We instinctively know that we should honor our mothers. Our mothers gave us life. They nurtured us by providing food and shelter and protection. When we were babies, they bathed us and cleaned us up when we messed ourselves. If there's anyone in our lives we should honor, it should be our mothers. Now, dads, I know that there is a case for honoring you as well, but uh, just wait because next uh, month we're going to have give you your own special day, so we'll focus on, on fathers on that day. The primary reason we should honor our mothers is found in one of the foundational rules in our Bible, the Ten Commandments. These were the laws given directly to Moses on Mount Sinai. They were the very basis of how we were to love and honor God first, but then our parents as well. The Ten Commandments also guided how we should respect the rights of other people. Let's look at what this commandment says to us about honoring our parents. And this is from Genesis 20, verse 12. And it says here, 
Honor your father and your mother so that you may have a long life in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. That's it. That's the focal passage we are studying today about honoring our mothers. But before we do that, let's pray together. Lord, I thank you for this day that we are honoring our mothers. Lord, they, these are special women in our lives who have meant so much to us from, from the very time that we were born. Lord, we pray that you would bless each one of them. Help them to have a special day of remembrance from their children. And even for those ladies who are not mothers, uh, we wish to honor them as well. Lord, we thank you for giving us moms. And Lord, we pray that today you will help us to remember how much they have meant to us and how much they mean to us today. We pray that you would help us as we study about how to honor our mothers. For these things we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's first look at what the word honor means here in this verse that I just read. The Greek word used, timao, is used rather than the more common word, doxa. Now, doxa is a word from which we get our word doxology. A doxology a doxology is a word of praise given to our God for supplying our needs. Many churches sing the doxology every Sunday, often when the ushers bring down the offering down uh, to the front to place on the altar. And we sing, Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The doxology. But the word used in the Greek version of the Old Testament uh, uses a word which means to give honor to another, especially one who is your superior. In other words, this would be the word chosen when people wanted to praise their king, their elders, or distinguished guests. It was to say, we set a value on you that shows that you are worthy of our respect and honor. Paul says about the price that should be affixed to Jesus when he says in 1 Corinthians 6, verse 20, For you were bought at a price, so glorify God with your body. With this understanding, we could translate Exodus 20, verse 12, you shall value or treasure your father and your mother. Even though Exodus 20, verse 12 speaks of both parents, today we're just going to focus on the mother in the relationship today. One of the things that is common in almost every cultural context in our world from ancient times is the idea of filial respect, love, and reverence of certain family members. Confucius, who was a primary originator of Chinese relationship systems, taught that people should venerate or give honor to their superiors, especially younger family members uh, to their elders. Ancient Egyptians had a similar teaching. In fact, one of the Egyptian philosophers, Ta Hotep, who probably predated Abraham, gave instructions that echoed Exodus 20, verse 12. He said, The son who accepts the words of his father will grow old in consequence of so doing. And this Egyptian philosopher also taught, The obedient son will be happy by reason of his obedience. He will grow old. He will come to favor. Similar teachings were part of Greek and Roman philosophies as well. The Apostle Paul, in a verse that we recently studied together, said in Ephesians 6, verse 2, Honor your fathers and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise. Of course, Paul was incorporating the fifth commandment in his reminder to the Ephesian church. We need to consider the fifth commandment that I read earlier, the, the promise that God gives to the people who use the Ten Commandments to inform the way that they live. 
Honor your father and your mother so that you may have a long life in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. Most commentators stress that honoring your father and mother does not guarantee one a long life. Rather, you are speaking to the people of Israel as a whole. If you follow these commandments I am giving you, you will have a long existence in the promised land, the land I am giving you as your inheritance. How does one honor one's mother then? The first thing I want us to think about is the idea of obedience. One important way that we honor our mother is by obeying her. Jesus himself modeled that respect for his parents in his early life. You will recall the incident that Luke shares in his gospel about the 12-year-old Jesus being left behind in Jerusalem by accident. His parents had just made a trip to Jerusalem to offer sacrifices during Passover. On their way home as they were traveling with a big group of people, they assumed the adolescent Jesus was with the other families in the caravan. But stopping one day out of Jerusalem, Jesus was nowhere to be found. So they returned to Jerusalem. Where did they find the young lad? He was listening to the teaching of the elders there and asking relevant questions, questions which were much beyond his age, especially since he had no formal theological training. Following this incident, Luke writes in Luke 2, verse 51, Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. That is a consistent message found throughout both the Old and New Testaments. Children, obey your parents. You'll note that several places in God's word that demonstrated the consequences of a young child not obeying their parent. In fact, Deuteronomy 21 verses 18 through 21 is indicative of the result. It reads there, If a man has a stubborn and rebellious son who does not obey his father or mother and doesn't listen to them even after they discipline him, his father and mother are to take hold of him and bring him to the elders of his city, to the gate of his hometown. They will say to the elders of his city, this son of ours is stubborn and rebellious. He doesn't obey us. He's a glutton, glutton and a drunkard. Then all the men of this city will stone him to death. You must purge the evil from you and all Israel will hear and be afraid. Now that seems pretty extreme to us, but fortunately, God's word showed several examples of men and women who honored their elders and were held in high esteem because of it. Think of Ruth and Boaz for Naomi and Joseph for his father Jacob. And there are many other uh, instances I could cite. A second thing I would mention is that we should give our mothers your time and attention. I want you to think about the care that a young mother gives to their infant. Possibly you are a young mother right now. You know by experience that caring for an infant or a young toddler takes time and energy. There's food to prepare and feed your, to your child. The child must be bathed and given clean diapers when needed. When the child wakes up from a bad dream or is feeling ill, you have to go and comfort them and give them your full attention. Taking care of a little one means you don't have much time for yourself or your husband. You get emotionally drained. You are constantly tired and possibly even irritated because of all the care that is demanded. Remember that you were once that baby needing care. You didn't make it easy on your mom, but you don't really remember all the care and love she had given you. As you grow up, you will want to show your mother appreciation or as the Bible says, honor for her for all that she has done for you. Talk to her regularly on the phone. Remember her with a card. Visit with her in her home. Do special things with her and for her. Just as a husband learns the things that are important to his spouse, we need to learn what things our moms appreciate. She will have her own love language that you will need to learn so that she knows she is loved and appreciated. Third, I'll mention caring for your mother in her old age. But when your mom goes into her golden years, 
things may need to change. You may be the one tasked with being the caregiver. My mom is 90 years old. Uh, she's been in relatively good health, although she's almost blind due to macular degeneration in both eyes. Last week she fell and, and broke her hip. And so my dad had to take her to the ER uh, and, and uh, uh, they kept her overnight. Then she had surgery the next morning. And now my mom is spending some time in a rehab facility. Uh, but when she is released from there and is able to go home, my brothers and their spouses and me are going to be spending some time with my mom and my dad to, to help her get through the day until she's healed enough to be able to care for herself again. Our dad needs help right now in, in doing some of the, the physical tasks that need to be done with her. So this is a way for us to honor them both. When our moms get to that age when some health or mobility issues come up, we may need to turn around and be the caregiver for them to help them meet their everyday needs. I know that not everyone is able to be a full-time caregiver because they have other adult responsibilities that they need to uh, tend to, but if it, it is at all possible, return the favor of giving your mother care when others are not able to care for her. These points of care may only take minutes out of your day rather than hours or even a full-time commitment, but showing love and compassion for your mom in her old age is a wonderful way to honor her. I have some additional thoughts and, and issues that I feel like I need to bring up before we close. First, how do we show honor to a mother who abandoned us or treated us badly? I know that not everyone has a mother that has been with them through their formative years. She may have had personal issues that kept her from being that, that loving, caring adult that you needed when you were young. She may have gone out of your, your life because of health or emotional issues. But there are some moms who have remained in our lives who haven't shown us grace and love in a way that has felt tangible to us. What do we do in that case? How can we honor our mother in that situation? There's no easy answer to this question, but I know that the solution must come from much time spent in prayer before the Father in heaven to come to an acceptable God-approving place. I think we need to remember that our Heavenly Father also had some children who didn't respect Him or treat Him well. You'll remember the unfaithfulness of the children of Israel. Remember that all of us, too, are sinners in need of grace. Sometimes we have mothers who need our grace. I know that is not easy to do, but just as God has found a way to love us and, and love us lavishly, we too must find a way to show as much respect as we can for a mother who has been a poor example of being that loving mother in our life. The second issue I think we need to think about, is it possible to transfer our honor to a mother who has become our adopted mother? The reality behind this question is that an adoptive mother can be just as precious to a child as a biological mother could be. Many women have adopted children out of a love that is overflowing. We need to remember that God has adopted us as his own children. Now listen to what Paul says to us about the God who has adop adopted us as his very own children, where Paul writes in Galatians 4 verses 4 through 7, when the time came to completion, God sent his son, born of woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father, so you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then God has made you an heir. Now, just as God has adopted us who were enslavedly to our sins, to become not only a child of His, but one of God's heirs. We are ready to inherit all the riches of God's glory. 
It's that same kind of spirit that an adoptive mother can bring to a child who needs a mom. She can easily love that child as much as a mom who had a natural born child. That is a precious legacy to leave. So on this Mother's Day, I'm going to challenge each of you to pay proper love and respect to your moms. If you haven't shown them love yet today, it's not too late to demonstrate in a way that means something to your mom, that she is a special person, person in your life. It's not too late to show them that you honor them for being your mother and you love and appreciate them for all they have done for you. Bless you.